Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Riley Lewis Show. It's been a long time since I've been on YouTube, long time no see, but I'm here and I'm back. I'm on a new, completely new thing, new entity, I've branched out on my own. I'm on a new a new channel altogether, but you can find me at The Riley Lewis Show on YouTube. Again, that is The Riley Lewis Show on YouTube. I am happy to be back. I have so much news to talk about, so let's just jump right in. So speaking of that, today we will begin with some attacks that are being made against J.K. Rowling and her character. Um, not any of the characters she's written about in her Harry Potter books, but about her actual character. Now you may know her as being the author primarily of the Harry Potter books, which were incredibly huge global bestsellers. That said, um, there's an opinion piece today at the Washington Post that is accusing J.K. Rowling of being transphobic. And I thought that this was really interesting because I know there's definitely a, a larger culture war that we'll talk about that does extend into biology and, you know, the boundaries or limitations or perceived limitations of the human condition. And there's lots of healthy discussion around that and not healthy discussion around that. But having said all of that, the allegation that the Post is making is that J.K. Rowling is transphobic. And I found this to be incredibly surprising. Well, I guess I shouldn't say... So surprising for me, but not surprising for, you know, if your standard is the Twitter bar, then not surprising at all. Um, that said, you know, she, she has made some, some, some remarks on Twitter. She has made some other public statements about the lived experiences of cisgender women. Um, and she's just been accused of being transphobic. Uh, Rowling has responded to these criticisms by saying, quote, I want trans women to be safe at the same time. I do not want to make natal girls and women less safe, which means she's really just trying to recognize trans women and also cisgender women. And I don't really understand why in, in, a, in a discussion about about breaking away from binary norms and gender identity, we, we've made this binary, this other binary dichotomy where either you're pro-trans or you're pro-biology, and that means you're anti-trans. And it's just very ironic that we've created this binary dichotomy while trying to escape a binary dichotomy. That said, you know, by the way, I should also add that one of the most frustrating things about the time that we live in nowadays is the fact that everybody is, is hellbent on labeling each other all the time. And uh, I say that because this is a term, I'm not sure if Rowling has self-described herself as a turf, but there's this online internet term, TERF, which means trans-exclusionary radical feminist, which has been applied to Rowling. I'm not sure if by herself or just by the author, again, of this Washington Post article, which basically, again, this author is claiming that Rowling is completely dismantling her public reputation by trying to walk this nuanced line where she says, yes, uh, cisgender women, yes, trans women, which... I don't understand why that's so hard to understand, but for some people, I think they just like, you know, stirring the pot because it's good for ratings. So, uh, I mean, and this author specifically is saying that, quote, Rowling is upending her legacy piece by piece. I mean, what, is, what does that even mean? Upending her own legacy piece by piece because you disagree with her? I mean... Do you guys want to live in a country where, or should I say, does everybody listening to this want to live in a country where every time someone disagrees with you, you just cancel their identity? I mean, th this is just really absurd. And, you know, again, from another perspective, this is really just a, a casualty in a, or a proxy, I should say, in the larger culture conflict, which is extended to our interpretations and our conversation around, um, you know, modern and contemporary science. And when I say science, I mean hard sciences, you know, chemistry, allegedly biology, physics, social sciences, including political science, and even the way we think about the scientific body of literature that we do have. Again, science is much more about a methodology. It's a method that we apply to different things. So we have climate science, we have biology, we have chemical sciences, we have mechanical sciences, we have other all, tech, all sort of different technical sciences, but, but it's really about the mindset. And again, if I understand the situation correctly, what we have really here going on is a difference in opinion, honestly, I think, which I also think is, well, I don't understand the difference in opinion, but even that said, we should be able to allow, we should be able to disagree with each other peacefully. We should be able to coexist and also not 
think the exact same way about everything and where we should be allowed to have different perspectives. So this idea where you can tell JK Rowling she's not a true woman because she doesn't feel the same way about you or if she doesn't feel the same exact way about an issue as you do, you can't just take away her identity. And that's what really this, that's what's going on here. This person is trying to can cancel JK Rowling's identity because they just don't agree with some of the tweets she's made, which I honestly think is so silly and such a, a, an infinite waste of time and resources. I can't believe this is even an article, by the way. I really just can't believe it. Um, but that said, you know, let's just, we'll, we'll try to bow this up with, with a, an actual, you know, fair question, which is, is the human spirit and the human body even, is it malleable? Is it infinitely malleable? Is it set in stone? Is it predetermined? What, what do the hormones mean? What, what does it mean that we understand biological sciences? Are there some characteristics that are unique to humanity? Are there some characteristics that, that transcend different species? I mean, all of this stuff is vastly complicated, by the way. So I just want to say that whether or not whether life is binary, non-binary, somewhere in between, it's all it's all made up. It doesn't really even matter. I don't know if it even really matters. What matters to me most in the end is that we're all living here together now. So I don't even understand why any of this is a big deal. But that said, you know, I, I really want to say that I I definitely do disagree with this author. I think this this author literally says that Rowling is taking a turn into the quote dark arts of bigotry and it's like chill out it's not being a bigot to try to understand the lived experiences of women who've been oppressed because they're women like meaning that sex has been a factor in certain people's lives so it's not bigotry to just acknowledge all people so i, I don't understand why this is why this is even in the news but we live in the 21st century in america and of course this is in the news and in other news that is being completely blown way out of proportion the San Diego City Council voted on Monday to increase funding for the San Diego Police Department, despite personal requests from well over 4,000 residents to reduce funding for the police, which I actually have to admire. I mean, good for the community. It's, 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 I'm, ac I'm actually really happy to see that people are interested in voicing their opinions and going to vote and actually expressing and going to speak, and whether it's an email or a phone call or an in-person visit. I'm actually really happy to see that. So, number one, nice job, San Diego. Uh, the people really turned out. That's really cool. Um, that said, the council voted 8 to 1 on Monday to increase the department's budget by $27 million, which brings it up to a total of roughly $560 million. Um, now, this vote followed a 12-hour-long hearing, uh, up reportedly, in which hundreds of people spoke from the community, hundreds of emails were received, and again, hundreds of phone calls were made um, to, the, to the San Diego City Council. That said, there are a few different ways to interpret this news. Um, and on theme with our last topic, it doesn't have to just be one or the other. It doesn't have to be binary. Um, you know, and it really all depends as well on your end goal. And so I'm gonna break this down beginning with the end goal, which I, if I understand the situation correctly, I believe the end goal is well, I guess it's a few things. It's systemic reform, um, like policy-wise, police culture-wise, um, retraining officers, um, and as vague as this sounds, because justice is, you know, it lacks a universal definition, but achie achieving justice not only for George Floyd, but also, um, you know, really, really achieving some some major milestone in criminal justice reform. So all of that said, without getting into a, a winded conversation about what justice really technically means, I think that these these goals I listed represent at least some of the aspirations of some portions of the protesters. Um, and one one of the proposed solutions. So let's so let's talk about solutions. One of the proposed solutions is to return is. I should say one of the uh, one of these solutions is to is to retrain police officers, retrain them in social work, retrain them in, in human humanitarian intervention, de-escalation tactics, nonviolent intervention tactics. Um, you know, for for example, this by the way might require extending the training school from something like I think right now it's six to eight months, maybe in the state of California, and maybe extend that two to three years. I think that that would be a really, really good thing. But 
the, the, the thing about training these officers in social work and dialogue and effective communication and de-escalation tactics is that I, I, I don't think you're going to see those sort of changes happen with a decrease in funding. I really, I really doubt that that's what's going to happen, especially because in San Diego, at least, the last three to four years of raising raising the funding for the police has all gone to more benefits and more salary for the for increased pay basically for the people on the job, the officers. So that isn't even going to stuff like outside training, contracting, and extending the time for for boot camp. So ironically, from this perspective, defunding the police, which has become a very large uh, call um, just socially. Would, would probably perpetuate the problem instead of solving the problem. Additionally, um, you know, uh, I just want to say that I, I think that it's okay to admit that our police needs needs some updates. We need some some definitely some some root changes. But if we're gonna if that's our expectation, we have to be realistic about managing our expectations, and that means that we can't dismantle defund the police and at the same time also have police that are reformed and really good, competent social, cultural workers that make the community a safer place for everybody. And again, that's that's my end goal. My end goal is a safer world for everybody. I don't like violence. I don't like conflict. I, I, I think that we should be able to work stuff out with our words. And I would like to see the police be able to take on some sort of authority role in our society, but I also want to be able to trust them, and I think they need to take certain measures to earn back the trust that they've lost. And that's okay to admit. I just also ironically think that in that way it requires funding, certainly not defunding, because how could you have more training but do it with less money? So I just think that we need to be a little more understanding of, you know, if, if our end goal here is to just not have police, then yes, defund them. If our end goal is to have better, more reformed, more effective, more compassionate police, well then, well, again, it's manage your expectations. So I want to I want to end today's episode on that because it's the first episode and what will be a very fruitful uh, uh, podcast here on this new network that I'm on, completely branched out here at this new network. But you can still again find me on YouTube at the Riley Lewis Show. Again, that is the Riley Lewis Show on YouTube. I really appreciate your time and thank you for listening today. If you like what you heard, you want to support me and support my content, please hit that subscribe button down below or like this video or do both. It really, really helps me out. You can also feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. I always appreciate the feedback. Um, but again, thank you so much for listening. You've been listening to The Riley Lewis Show.